Hello everyone, in this video, I'd like to discuss how can we program the model in the PLC and in the meantime, your model comes with the non-zero initial status. For example, the case in this video, I will use the model represent a temperature system. The input of this heater system was 1 watt and based on the 1 watt as the input, the output of this heater system, the temperature was 50 Celsius degree. The 1 watt input and the 50 Celsius degree output, this is the initial status of this model. And then based on this initial status, once we give 3 watts to this system, then the actual input of this model, that should be 3 minus 1, 2 watts as the input of this model. And once we got the output from this model, we programmed from the previous video, then the output of the model should plus the 50 Celsius degree. In this video, we will discuss how can we program this. And keep in mind one thing, if you review the control textbook, most of the examples in the books or in any theory discussion, you will see most of cases they will use the DC motor as an example. While we are using the DC motor as an example, there is one assumption behind that initial status is a zero and output is a zero. Because when you deliver zero voltage to the motor, your motor is definitely a zero RPM, right? So all of those DC motor or solar motor example, their initial status is a zero, output is zero. But in the real system, especially in the industrial area, a lot of cases will use the first order to represent the heater system. 99% of those systems, the initial status is now zero. Even your input is a zero, but output of the temperature is not zero, right? At least your output of your system should be the normal temperature should be your ambient temperature. So definitely your input and output, or at least the output of your initial status is not zero. So in this case, I will show how can we deal with this non-zero initial status while we are using the model. Let's do a very brief review. In the previous video, I programmed the difference equation into the PLC and we compare with the theory in the MATLAB. So as we can see, using these two spots as the comparison, we can see the output, they are the same. That means the model we program into the PLC, the model itself is running properly. And then based on this model calculation result, we will involve the non-zero initial status. All right, let's go into the TI portal again. It doesn't matter which PLC you are using. As long as you understand this theory, this method behind, you can implement the similar logic in any other computer system, embedded system, and the PLC system. All right, let's start. If you recall this example, so the moment when I was using this example, this transfer function, this transfer function came from a system that initial status, the input was one watt and the output was 50. Okay, so how can we evolve the initial status? Okay, let's go ahead. Let's program like this way. And let's go to this function. And I will create one input initial status. Let's call that zero zero. And the one output y zero zero. Okay, so this is the setting. Okay, we can also retain them. And then from the input area, so if we go to the input, so the actual input here is no longer the direct input from the outside. So it need to be considered with this initial status here. Okay, so the real input of the transfer function, it is this, right? So the real input now it will become the system input minus the initial status. 
Okay. Then after this minus the real input minus this initial status, then the value from this variable is a real input of the model. Okay. Then the output of this, this is the output value from the model calculation. So we will rename this the output y here. Now the output y actually that come from the model. Okay, so we can call this output came from the model. And the system output output y. The system output that actually equal to the model output add this output y the initial status so here we can see the output of the system is equal to the model here model output add this initial status of the output y okay Keep in mind here, while we are doing the input, this is the minus. While we are doing the output, this is the output. This is the add here. Okay, and when the system, the model is doing itself, the output is here. This is the, this is the model output, okay? So the final of the result then the model output add this initial status of the y. So if you recall, we discussed this topic from here, from an example in the second video while we are talking about when we got this k, how we calculate the k, while I'm using this 4.5, this example. So the real input will become 3.5. So if we grab to here, the input of the system is 4.5, 4.5 here. It will minus this input initial status. Okay, then the real input of the model is this 3.5. And when we got the result, final result from the model, then we will add this initial status of the y, 50 here. The model output that equal to 175, then we add this 50 that equal to 225, okay? So while we're calculating this, the model I was using the 0 0.11. So we can change to 0 0.11 and uh, we can verify if the final result equal to 225. Okay, let's do this test. And now I can firstly change this A to 0 0.11. Okay, still using the sample time 0 0.2, K was 50. And to set this initial status of the X and the Y, we can grab them to the watch table so we can manipulate this two value. So this is the input output and, and we can drag this into this watch table. Okay, this is the input and the output, we can drag them to here. Okay, this is the watch list. Okay, watch list. Okay, we can close. And uh, this is the model of the Y and uh, Finally, we will care about this. So we can copy this, paste to this watch table. Okay, uh, we will download the program first. Okay, and in the meantime, I can go to the trace. Okay, start recording. Okay, now it is running, starting from the zero. Okay, so we will prepare the initial status of the input, that's the one watt, okay? And the output initial status is 50 Celsius, it's 50 centigrade, okay? And the input, this time, we will give this input to 4.5, okay? As this example, as this example here, okay? And then let's verify if the model output equal to 175 after the system passed the settling time. And uh, finally, let's see if the value equal to 225. Okay, 
so we can transfer. I can minimize this. This is a modal output. This is the final system output. As we can see, this curve almost proxies to the flat. So it's almost got this uh, settling. So we can see the result is 225. Same as our theory calculation. And the modal output, this is the 175. As it's 50, then the result equal to 225. Okay, initial status of the input is a 1 volt, and uh, the input is a 4.5. While the input of the system is 4.5, the real of the model is 4.5 minus 1. This is a 3.5. The 3.5 is a real input of the model. Okay, this is the real output of the model. Okay, so as we can see, this curve become very flat. So this is the 225 and the 175. All right, so that means this model also considered the initial status. This is a correct. So we can go back to review this one. Okay, this is the core of the equation. And this is the for the input and output and also the recording for one sample before of the input and the output. And uh, this is the exposional area. All right, this is the video to show how can we implement the first order difference equation into the PLC. And if we briefly real again, so original transfer function is this. So while we are using the difference equation calculate this, the core portion of the initial setting sample time, exposure frequency, and the initial status, and the k here. Don't forget the gain of the system. Then using this way, you can use your PLC run this model, and then basically your object, in this case, my object is the regulator plus the heater. This object can be simulated inside the PLC. So while you are doing the PID control or any other controls during the virtual commissioning or during the simulation, so you can use this model run as this object before you get this real system. So you can use this equation run as this object then to test your logic, test your PID. Then once you have the real system, so you can stimulus switch this equation into your real system, right? So you can use this simulated system to represent your real system. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.